Hi, I'm Nathan with theebookreader.com. For this video, I'm gonna give you guys a review of the Onyx Books Max 2. So this is Onyx's largest e-reader. It's got the 13.3 inch ink screen. And you can't underemphasize just how huge this device is. The video doesn't do it any justice. I reviewed Sony's 13.3 inch model last year and it's like 200 grams lighter. So I mean, it seemed really surprisingly small and light for its size, but this thing is huge. Um, definitely has uh, some advantages over the Sony with a more advanced Android software with the open Android 6.0 software. So it's got the page buttons on the bottom, menu button, back button, and then on the bottom edge, you got the power button. Uh, you got the mini HDMI port, and you got the regular USB port as well as a headphone jack. So uh, then on the back, it does have the one speaker. It's very quiet. Um, and then you've got the stylus holder on the right. Like I said, it uses a uh, Wacom touchscreen, so you've got really accurate writing, uh, and it's got good pressure sensitivity and good responsiveness. Uh, and the capacitive screen does work well as well. So to get an idea of the size, here it is next to the 9.7 inch iPad. Obviously with the iPad, you get a lot more reflections on the screen. So uh, you do get a better reading experience with the ink. That's one of its big advantages, like outside you can do that, but it does not have a backlight or a front light. So you do need some sort of lamp or some such. So here's a look at the same PDF on both of these devices. So you can kind of get an idea of how the you know how it scales on the larger 13.3 inch screen versus like the iPad screen. So you do get, uh, I have the boldness enabled on the Max, which is something you're not going to get with like, you know, iPad apps. So it's a little bit bolder with the text. You got the bigger text, obviously, with the larger screen. And then Onyx also offers a bunch of different zooming options so you can crop the margins and stuff like that if you want to. So, okay, so here's one problem with this device. I ordered this on eBay used and you can actually see a bunch of indentations on the screen from the previous owner writing on the screen too hard with the stylus. So that's kind of a known issue with these uh, Onyx, the Max 2 and the Note. If you don't use a screen protector, if you push down really hard, it can damage the screen. You can't really see it when you're using the device, but you can see it when you shine the light on it. You can actually feel the indentation. So I had to return this device. I only used it a couple of days. So keep that in mind as this review goes on. I didn't have a lot of time with it like I do other devices, but I do have the Onyx Note and I've been using it the past few months, which has the exact same software. Uh, it's pretty much the exact same device other than the screen. So let's talk about some of the software here. Um, so Onyx has their own custom home screen launcher here with the Android operating system. And you've, like I said, it runs Android 6.0 and it comes with Google Play so you can install apps. Like I said, I only had this device a couple days, so I didn't even bother with installing apps or anything like that. You can check out my Onyx Note review. I already posted like a video of the Kindle app and using some other apps like the Google Play Books app and doing typing with the Bluetooth keyboard and stuff like that. So you can check my uh, Onyx Note review as well for some additional info because uh, they run the exact same software and have the same exact features other than the HDMI port with the uh, screen mirroring, which I'll show later. So you got the included stylus pen um, and it's got this uh, button on it. So if you hold the button, you can activate the eraser. <clears throat> You can also use the other end of the device as the eraser or the other end of the pen. It's got the eraser function on it as well. So you got some different kind of options here. You've got, you can customize exactly how thick you want the pen. Um, you can customize like uh, you got these different templates. Um, so the writing experience does work well. I mean, it's nice and responsive. Uh, and then I like having that little eraser on the uh, button. You just hit the button and then you can erase quickly. So it's nice and easy. It also has this uh, other feature called vector writing mode. So if you switch over to that, you can like write on the screen and then it will put your, um, you know, your writing along in the top corner there from left to right. And you can also like hit return. There's some different functions for this. You can also add text notes in, in between your handwritten notes. So you can also switch this uh, menu bar to the right side of the screen if you'd rather have it on the right side of the screen. Um, up here on the top, we've got some different functions as well. You've got the undo redo so you can keep track of all your changes um, you can also uh, with this like I said earlier with the uh, eraser if you hold the button you can erase and it uses the stroke eraser um, by default which really erase all the strokes but you can also switch over to this eraser where it'll only erase right where you tell it to erase uh, so in here you got some different templates um, some different note-taking templates and you can also load in some of your own templates as well up here if you hit the plus button it adds more pages and minus will subtract the page you're on. Uh, and then if you hit this thumbnail view, you can jump across to your different pages easily that way. And you can have a whole bunch of pages. So uh, again, you got some different templates in here, some different line templates. So if you wanted to have like a typical notepad, 
uh, you got that option. So over here, you got the, this is the uh, pen that doesn't have any pressure sensitivity and the one up here has pressure sensitivity. So if you're writing light, the lines will be lighter, lighter. And if you're pushing down harder, you get the darker lines. Uh, it doesn't have as much pressure sensitivity as the Onyx Books Note, but I can't really tell a big difference. I guess you can tell a little bit when you're pressing down harder. Um, so you've got these different um, shapes as well. You can have, you know, triangles and squares and straight lines if you wanted to add straight lines to your notes. Um, so you can rename your notes. Uh, you can share these notes on Evernote and Dropbox. So I have it to set up to sync uh, on Dropbox with my Onyx Note, and then it automatically adds your um, notes to a note folder, and it uh, automatically syncs with other devices. So it's really easy to get them off, which is really convenient. So the device, of course, this supports a variety of formats. You can load in eBooks. I think the 13.3 inch screen is just a little bit overkill for reading eBooks personally, but I mean, when it comes to PDFs. Definitely a very good option for PDFs because you got the large screen. You can also crop the margins if you want to further zoom in. You got all kinds of different options with Onyx's software. I won't be able to show a fraction of their features here. They've really got a really advanced set of features for their PDFs. Um, and you've also got like contrast adjustment. You got auto page turns. You can customize the zoom level. You can just zoom in by increments if you wanted to use the zoom dial. And then you've got like the custom cropping region. You can customize exactly how you want your page to lay out. And the great thing about it is, is it will keep your zoom level. Like some devices will reset your zoom level when you turn the page, which is just ridiculous. But Onyx is obviously, uh, it'll keep that zoom level set for whenever you're turning, turning pages. Um, you've got these different navigation modes too. So if you wanted to read like two column PDFs, you can just have it follow the columns. Uh, you can have multi-column PDFs. You can have article mode. There's like comic mode. So it'll follow, go the opposite direction. So you've got all these different kind of navigation options to cover a variety of different types of documents. So here's a look at the uh, menu for all the different navigation modes. So you can have, you can see here, is it, it'll show the arrow like which direction uh, the page turns are going to go so when you page forward it'll go from left to right or right to left depending on how you set it and then you can have it set up for different quadrants as well so uh, definitely a lot of features for that it's nice and you've also got text reflow i don't know why you'd really want to use this on a 13.3 inch screen um, but it is an option where you can reflow your pdf you can control the font size so if you wanted larger font size without zooming in or whatever but it kind of does weird things with the formatting um i don't know it's uh, something better for like smaller devices i wouldn't really use it on this uh larger device like this but again it does give you more control of how your uh, how your pdf lays out the you know your font sizes and stuff like that so um let's go ahead and talk about the handwriting features so if you're just in regular reading mode and you hold down you can highlight with the stylus or you can highlight with your uh, finger as well um, and then all your highlights get added to this list uh, and that you can easily access and you've got the uh, bookmark feature up here if you tap on the little bookmark icon uh, add your bookmarks to the list um, and then you've also got the dictionary if you hold down. Uh, I never even bothered installing the dictionary. Um, and then you can also use text-to-speech. So the text-to-speech, it's not great, but here, here's a quick example. It's very quiet. Not clear what is What's the plastic? We say we talk about period of grains and put a footnote explaining the difference between period of grains and we say we talk about period of grains and put a footnote explaining the difference between period of grains and spectrograms. I think you can install better voices from the uh, Google Play Store. Um, so let's talk about the um, on-screen writing. So with the Onyx's devices, you need to actually enter the writing mode in order to write on the screen. Otherwise, your stylus will turn pages and do highlights and stuff like that. So again, you've got the different uh, different options for their stylus thickness. You basically have the same kind of settings in here as you did in the Note app that I showed earlier. You got some different, you know, you got the two different pens, the one with pressure sensitivity, one without. You got the undo, redo. You can uh, save your notes. You can also turn the pages down here. So if you wanted to stay in note taking mode, you can just go to the next page and continue writing on the screen that way. And so all your notes, they get added to a list uh, on your in your table of contents view. So uh, and you can also export this stuff. So once you exit that writing mode, then as you can see, you're back to using the stylus as like a, you know, as you would with your finger, you can do notes, you can do highlights, you can turn the pages. So that's got kind of a multi-function usage there. So if you go up and tap this icon for your, t uh, like your table of contents view and your note view, it shows all your notes listed here, show your highlights, your bookmarks, uh, and then you can jump around to them that way. Uh, and then if you hit the uh, icon up here that also has the side note view. So the Onyx devices, they got this new side note view so you can do um, notes while you're reading so it, it will add a blank page to the PDF document so when you export it it'll have this note page in between the pages 
You can also control the zooming if you wanted to zoom in this way. And you've got some uh, extra settings in here, sort of like the Note app when you expand this. Uh, and then you can also switch it to the left side as well if you're left-handed and you wanted to write on the left side of the screen. So then you can export your notes as a PDF document. It'll have all your notes in the PDF. Uh, you can also customize like if you want the lines to be different colors or you can just leave them the default. Uh, so here's a look at the monitor mode. So again, I didn't get a lot of time to test with this device, but here's a look at it connected with the HDMI port to a Windows laptop. Um, and it does work pretty well for the most part. I mean, as you can see here, you get the nice ink screen. This is good for like outdoor readability if you wanted to do some work outside, but there is some lag. Um, it's going to be hard to sort of show you on the uh, screen or on the video here, but uh, when you're working with the HDMI mode, there is just like a half a second of lag. Uh, when you're using the uh, mouse, I find it a little bit awkward to sort of, uh, you know, find where I'm at if you're ju just because it has this little bit of jitteriness to it. So it's a little bit more awkward than I would like. I don't know if there's some way to better optimize this. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of time to work with this, but, um, you know, I mean, the screen looks good, but it does have a lot of ghosting as well. If you'll notice, like when they're scrolling, you get a lot of after image effects. You can like uh, refresh the screen manually. But again, the delay is a little bit awkward. I'm not sure if there's a, like a better way to optimize this or something like that, but um, it does have a little bit of, it does take a get some getting used to. And then you can also, obviously you can type. Uh, that's probably what it's best suited for is you can use it typing. But uh, I actually find that it works better if you're just using an Android app and a Bluetooth keyboard, you get in an A2 mode, like I showed on the Onyx Note review. Uh, it actually works really well that way and you don't get as much ghosting as you are uh, with this. You can see the lines from where I moved the, uh, the this uh, notepad app over. You can see all the ghosting. So I haven't tried the Dasong e-ink monitor, but I mean, from the videos online, it definitely looks like it's quite a bit faster and smoother as far as the browsing experience. But I think it costs a fortune. It's over a grand and all it is is a monitor. So I mean, if you just want to use a little bit of monitoring functions, now and then, I think that this is probably the, definitely the better value since it's an e-reader and you, it's got all these other advanced features other than just being a monitor with no touchscreen. So uh, again, if you, you hold this button right here, if you hold the menu button, you can actually refresh the screen to get rid of the ghosting, but it comes back pretty quick. You can see a lot of it here in the white space, uh, the after images from the previous part of the screen. So you can get rid of it, but you know, all right, so this video is starting to get really long. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right here. I know I didn't get to show everything, but check out the ebookreader.com. Uh, I got more reviews. I got the uh, comparison with this in the note. And I got a full review of the Onyx Books note as well. Um, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Bye.